Hi everybody, this is Miko from ML Sound Lab, and this is my advanced tutorial for the Neural DSB Nameless Fordin plugin. So um, when you start this plugin up, this is what it looks like, and um, obviously you can see this head made by Fordin. Uh, it would normally have Meshuga text here, but for legal reasons it doesn't, so it's just nameless, as the name suggests, pun intended. Um, okay, so this is the amp head, and this kind of has three pages in, on it. So you have the drive section, the amp section, and the cab section. So uh, the drive section has this grind fording pedal, uh, which is, you know, a fording pedal that you can also buy, but you have it here in plug-in format, which is really awesome. Then you have the amplifier and um, then you have the cabinet section and I'm really happy to say that my company ML Sound Lab made these captures so um, these are actually done by me personally so this is my personal cabinet uh, with my personal microphones captured here with the cleanest methods possible and if you don't know me from before uh, I'm probably best known for working with Misha Mansour and other big name artists from the Fractal Audio Camp who make the Axe FX 2, 3 and AX8 and units like that. And let's dive into the plugin. So I actually recommend starting from this page because, you know, the cabinet mic up is the most effective way to get a really good guitar sound. So before you dive into tweaking EQ and stuff like that, you can start here because this is the biggest EQ change you will find. So um, let's start with just one microphone and here I have the Dynamic 57. This is the setup that I usually use. So I really like the 650 position here and distance zero. So it's a close mic but kind of on the edge. Don't worry about this picture because it's not photorealistic. So um, on the picture this is really all the way up to the edge I guess. I would say in reality it's right neck, not ca on the cap edge, but like the left side of the microphone is on the edge. Something like that would probably be this position in real life. So um, let's hear how it sounds like. So it already sounds really good. And it's just this one SM57 microphone position. The cool thing here is that you can kind of mic this up the way you would normally in real life or the way I would do it in my studio. <laughs> this is exactly the same thing, I guess. So um, obviously it's not going all the way to the edge if you go all the way there. So this is still a usable sound. Uh, in real life, this would not be a usable microphone position. Uh, but the middle position here is the real middle position on that speaker. So um, if you really like that sound, you can use that. But I, I personally think it's pretty bright. It can work for some genres for sure. But personally, I like it to be a little bit more to the edge. So let's place this 57. <laughs> So what you're listening for here is the two different types of high end. So while you're here on the middle of the speaker, you kind of have this higher frequency. When you go to the edge of the speaker, it's almost like a middle frequency rumble type thing. So what you want to do is try and balance these two different types of sizzles and get kind of a nice blend and that'll give you a really full sound. So I think that in the position 650 around there it blends really nicely. So I'll just demonstrate how I found it. Even the middle position is actually pretty good. But it can get, I think it's even better here. And that sound is actually really usable on its own. You don't necessarily need a blend mic. But um, you can have a blend mic here. And what I did here was 
uh, just have something that'll beef up the 57 just a little bit. It's lower in the mix, so it's just gonna add a little bit of that beefy low end. So let's compare. This is off. And this is on. So you get that in your face low end as well, but it doesn't get too woofy or anything like that. That's a really balanced sound. Um, obviously you can try different microphones as well. Um, let's try the 421 because that's usually uh, a really nice microphone to blend almost 50-50 with the 57. Um, let's try it out. <laughs> Uh, so you're listening to the same thing once again. You try to get rid of that sizzle in this mix, so... Somewhere around there it's pretty good. And when you blend these two microphones this way, you get more cuts. With the 421, you get a lot more cuts in your sound and it'll be full and, you know, it's kind of the John Petrucci thing if you're a fan of this. This ribbon mic, however, is what I chose to use here, so let's go forward with this one. And um, this was set to minus 12, right? <laughs> Okay, so obviously you can experiment here as much as you want. Uh, I'm really satisfied with this sound here, so I'll just jump into the amp section and as the preset name kind of suggests, this is a sound that I compared with my real life Marshall. So um, my Marshall is a DSL, it's a different type of Marshall head, but you know, it's the most high gain amp that Marshall themselves make. So, so um, I was pretty uh, impressed with how close I got the sound here. The MVC is pushed in, but it's on full, presence at zero, treble at zero, middle on full, bass in the middle, and the gains also, but I'm only using the uh, one of the gains, so... This is a pretty awesome sound in my opinion. Check it out. Personally, I play pretty hard and I pick hard and I like to have lower gain so that my picking comes through and I can use dynamics and stuff like that. So for example, if I wanted to play blues with this sound, I could do that like... You know, I can do that, but at the same time, I can go all the way to kill switch engage, like. And that's the cool thing about this amplifier and amp sim that it can actually do that, it can pull that off, which goes to show that it's a really good amp sim. Um, one thing I want to note is the input. I've boosted it up 6 dB. Um, it's really important, you know, uh, this completely affects the amount of gain that you have. So I put it at 6 dB just so I don't peak the input. So you can see it here. Actually, I do peak it a little bit, but if I play normal stuff, it'll not peak. Um, at the same time, you can use this control to affect the gain. So if I pull it down to like zero, that's actually a pretty convincing kind of a drive sound. But on the other hand, if I really want to get super high gain, Thank you. 
and you can do that instead of using the foreign grind pedal here. Let's just put this back to 6 dB where I had it. This is kind of where I would have everything here. This is the preset that I would use for pretty much all rock genres and all the way to gent. Um, obviously I haven't discussed the drive pedal yet because I don't personally use them. But you can get that genty, honky kind of nasally type gent sound using this. So, so for example, I'll just demonstrate the difference here. And the same thing with this on. So it kind of becomes tighter and uh, really tight and it sounds pretty damn good as well. So that's a different type of sound, more aggressive, but you kind of lose the versatility using that. So if I play soft without it on, So yeah, it's um, for me it's enough gain this way. Um, but you know, the cool thing about this is that this sounds completely like a real amplifier. There are not that many hardware units that can do this either. Let me just point out that there's nothing on here. This is the plug-in straight up. My guitar, which is a PRSC24, uh, tuned to drop C, going straight into the board. And this plugin sounds just like you hear it in this tutorial. So um, this is the way I would set up this mic setup. Um, and I'm the guy who captured this, so maybe it has some value for you. So for the amp lock, I would really recommend trying these settings out because it sounds just like my Marshall head. Not saying that Marshall is a good thing, <laughs> but you know, it sounds like a real tube amplifier. Uh, and um, it's really easy to play, it feels amazing and you can cover a lot of genres this way. If you start adding a lot more gain and scooping the sound and stuff like that, it'll kind of sound a bit unprofessional if you ask me. And you can do that with real amps as well, but you know, this is kind of uh, how I would set up a professional guitar sound. So um, let's hear it once again. <laughs> If you haven't tried this out, you can do it for free now for 14 days. I highly recommend doing that, but I'm pretty sure once you've tried it out, you want to buy it. So it doesn't really matter after that. So uh, if you're into guitar sounds and you have a DAW and you, you record or even play with your computer, um, you should definitely check this one out. Uh, thanks, guys, and see you later.